Here's the results of the tube testing on my Hickok uh, model 600A tube tester. Uh, the first 6V6, as expected, has an open filament. It didn't light up at all. Uh, second 6V6, it did light up, however, has dead shorts in positions 1, 2, 3, and 4. That doesn't bode well for the output transformer. The 5AR4 uh, rectifier tested strong, and the uh, 12AT7 was great. The uh, 7025 was excellent, and the two Telefunken 12AX7s were uh, just tested out great. Uh, no internal shorts in any of these tubes, so I'm very pleased. Uh, I'll just have to go to the old tubes uh, selection and pick out a couple nice strong 6V6s. Well, I tested the output transformer and uh, was elated. Uh, it looks like it's going to be okay. Between the, on the output side, the red to blue was 163 ohms, red to brown was 162 ohms, and the um, primary was 3.4 ohms. So it looks like the shorted 6V6s didn't take any toll on the output transformer, which is great. Okay, I tested the power transformer and was pleased to see that there's continuity uh, everywhere that there should be. Uh, no open windings on it. Uh, so that's a delightful discovery. Uh, that'll save me like $80 or so. Uh, plus it's always nice to use the original uh, transformer even if it is a puny little rascal like this one. Well this is a cautionary tale about uh, speaker reconing. I cut off that hideous pile driver centerpiece and if you look they let the glue drip down the inside of the voice coil and glued it to the pole piece so that uh, I've broken it loose so it can move but this speaker once it was reconed it never could have worked um, I'm sure somebody was real disappointed after they spent the time and money and all to get it reconed and then uh, whoever did it glued the voice coil to the pole piece you really have to be careful when you get work done anymore Okay, I removed all the glue and now the speaker cone has really nice free uh, motion. I have really gone the extra mile with this Oxford speaker. I removed uh, some of the flat black to see what it looked like and we get the old gold anodized finish but with lots of imperfections and that's probably why they decided to spray it with flat black. I don't agree with that decision but I didn't make it. Okay, down here remember this whole part of the uh, little terminal strip was ripped loose as well as the, uh, the wires that went to the voice coil. Well I glued that back, went in and found the voice coil wire, reattached the flexible silk wire to it, brought it out here so that I now have 8 ohms across here. The voice coil now is uh, a complete circuit. I'm all excited. I decided to put a nice dust cover in the center, uh, everything's going great, and then watch this. Okay, that is the, like the death rattle of a speaker, and it happens when a completely incompetent person tries to recone it and puts the voice coil in too far down on the pole piece, so that it only has about, I don't know, probably a quarter of an inch of travel before it strikes at the bottom of the basket the speaker is completely unusable. That means now it will have to be completely reconed. Uh, and I'm kind of losing my, uh, let's say, appetite for Oxford speakers. And I've decided, having done some research, that a Jensen C10Q is probably the way to go. Uh, everybody says they have much better sound, uh, that it's a better speaker. So instead of just knocking myself out and spending a load of time and money fixing this thing, uh, I'm just going to opt for the relatively easy way out, and that is find a really nice 
Jensen C10Q and put it in the amp. Well, this is a fun job. It's 112.8 degrees outside and fortunately in my well insulated uh, shop it's only 111 uh, and I'm spending the day removing all the staples that hold the grill cloth. Now I don't know that whoever did the staples at Fender must have been paid by the staple because they went insane. Here they are, here's the ones I removed. Now here's the lottery. Today's lottery is guess how many staples Fender used to hold the grill cloth on the uh, Princeton amplifier. The answer will be later in this video. Here's what's under the grill cloth. Uh, they used a particle board uh, baffle and then they put these uh, like furring strips around the edges molding. Notice they put this one up here so that you'd have something to screw the Fender logo into. I guess this was to suspend the grill cloth off of the baffle. I'm not exactly sure why. Sure collected a lot of dirt and dust. I guess I've officially lost my mind, but I've been using some lacquer thinner and a toothbrush, and a lot of this god-awful paint is coming off of the grill cloth. I don't know if it's going to look good enough to use when I get through, but uh, it is the original grill cloth. Well, here's a grill cloth after about a gallon of lacquer thinner and an hour of breathing terrible fumes. And I gotta say, it almost looks usable. Uh, we'll see. I've still got a little more work to do. I'm cleaning up the speaker baffle and I notice there's some writing on it, like in crayon. There's an 18, I don't know if that's 19. And down here is a f like 418. Must be like production numbers or something. Uh, if anybody out there is trying to do a really perfect restoration of a Princeton, I guess it isn't legit unless it has this kind of bluish green crayon uh, letters written on it. Here's the grill cloth side all cleaned up. Uh, I lightly sprayed it with a little flat black, which having just spent about an hour and a half removing flat black wasn't a pleasant thing to do, but it needed it so you can't see it through the grill cloth. Well, there's that god-awful spray-painted uh, grill cloth cleaned with lacquer thinner and um, put back on the baffle uh, with the Fender logo and I think it looks great. It's got that real nice mellow old look instead of the bright shiny new look of a new grill cloth that everybody knows is fake. So I'm very pleased. Here's the logo for the Princeton. Uh, you'd, I just sprayed everything with a semi-gloss black then use one of those, I guess they call them orange sticks or something that women use for manicures and you go around and just scrape off the black paint everywhere where it's supposed to be silver. Then I clear coated it and I thought it came out pretty good. Here we have the newly painted Fender logo in place on the front of the uh, speaker baffle. Uh, I think it and the grill cloth actually look pretty darn good. As you can see up close, this grill cloth is not too shabby. So, now it's time to finish up the chassis and put it all together. After replacing the two bad 6V6s with a nicely matched pair of used 6V6s that I had on hand, I checked the bias. Uh, and using the output transformer shunt method, I found the plate uh, current to be 25 milliamps for both tubes, the plate voltage to be 392 volts for both tubes. As you can see, th these are really nicely matched. The calculation is we convert the milliamps to amps and it's 0.025 times 392 plate voltage gives us 9.8 watts plate dissipation. Maximum for a 6V6 is 11 watts. We normally bias to 70%, so what we should be seeing is 7.7 .7 watts of plate dissipation. Instead we're seeing 9.8 and that's considerably above the prudent level. That's 2.2 watts and I will tell you that these tubes at this bias setting do get extremely hot and I doubt that their life expectancy will be very great. So what I'm going to do is reduce 
this number and the way I'm going to do it is remove the ground straps from the cathodes of the 6V6's and start out with 100 watt resistors to ground on each and then uh, I will take uh, measurements and see what our new plate dissipation is. Okay, so uh, I've ended up with the 100 ohm from cathode to ground and I left the little ground strap in place and just used it to ground the end of the 100 ohm resistor. In both cases you'll see the ground strap down here, the 100 ohm resistor is under the twisted wires and let's take a look at the results. Well here are the results with the 100 uh, ohm cathode to ground uh, plate voltage for both tubes is 396 plate current on the left is 21 milliamps on the right is 20 uh, for a plate dissipation of 8.3 watts on the left, 7.92 watts on the right. A tiny bit over the 70 percent but a whole lot closer than it was. Okay, so I'm going to give this a try and see how I like it. Um, I know I'll sleep better at night knowing that I'm not roasting my 6V6s every time I turn this thing on.